J Jinx. Truck stop. This thing has seen better days. <laughs> I got a Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog. It's the catalog game. If you don't know how the rules work, find the first video in this playlist. I'm not trying to up my view count. I just don't want to explain it every time. This is the May edition, which I got in late April. But uh, here we are. So on the front cover, we have a couple of Kershaw Light Years. SMKW exclusives. They look interesting. I really applaud the colors. I don't really care very much for this candy cane striping on the pocket clips. I don't, I don't really like that. Uh, but yeah, loving the colors, the artistic contouring and the scales. These might be pretty neat and they're only 25 bucks. Uh, soft steel, but stainless. Grippy Neon GFN. Hmm, grippy GFN. Uh, pick one. <laughs> oh boy. First page right out of the gate. We have zero tolerance knives and a smattering of um, Kershaw knives. Yes, Kershaw has gotten into the business of what they are calling gentleman's slip joint pocket knives. They kind of look like Barlow's, but with one blade. Let's see what the ZT crew's got going on this month. Well, we got the 0762. Blah, 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 blah. Ooh, this one looks interesting. It's a slip joint. The 0230. Oh, designed by our friend Enzo. An 0350 Combat. What makes it that? Uh, CPMS 30V. I guess it's just called that. Hmm. Uh, it's blacked out. I guess that makes it a combat knife. Well, if I had to pick one of these in this smorgasbord, I'm probably going to go with a ZT knife. Not because it's like the most expensive stuff on the page, but this sheep's foot um, slip joint is intriguing. I'm not a big fan of carbon fiber, personally, but I am a fan of Enzo's designs. So I would go with the O230 slip joint folder. Let me change the lighting a little bit. Yeah, I try not to glare it up too much, but then it just gets too dark. Bullets! Ooh, I want this one. The Freedom Bucket. I don't care what's in it, I just want the bucket. Done. Freedom bucket. Oh gosh, more bullets. Alright, do they have anything uh, <laughs> funny on this page? Uh, what is this thing? Hornady Security Rapid Safes. So it's like a little drawer safe. And then we have a gun lock. I'm going to go with the drawer safe. It's got pre-drilled mounting holes. So you can mount it to things like uh, underneath a chair maybe. Just in case. All right, we've got American Buffalo knife and tool, and then some leather than leather than man leather multi tools. <clears throat> uh, a couple of other ones here. We got Roper knives and Cattleman's Cutlery. I'm not familiar with any of them on this page, but I think we've seen American Buffalo knife and tool before. Um. This one looks a lot like the um, Gerber flat iron. Hmm. I like the patterning on this handle. What is this? Prim 1MP coated handles. That's a cool material. Is this some kind of a resin or something? Uh, I like the names of some of these. Here we have the Chuck Wagon Trapper, which comes with a fork. And yeah, we got some nice patterned uh, micarta, maybe? 
Oh, and it's like a hobo tool. It comes apart. And there's a little bottle opener on the fork part. Hmm, I'm not going to pick anything on the leather inside. I'm all about this page right now. And this knife is pretty handsome, too. Kind of looks like an old German uh, hunting knife. Well, I think I'm going to go with this one because I, I think the handle looks really cool. It's called uh, Grunt. And it is a ball bearing assisted open thing. 8CR13 MOV steel. $42. On this page, we have Bear Edge on this side, and uh, Bear Ops on this side. The Bears. Okay. Uh, well, these knives kind of look like, you know, maybe they're buck quality. These look like they're a little higher quality. Um, there's a lot going on, too. Nice color choices. I like this, like, cyan with wood. That, that's pretty neat. And what, what's this thing? What are, what are these? Oh, it's like a sharpener that comes with it. Let's check out Bear Ops. The Rancor 8 frame lock. That looks like it would be comfy. You know, these uh, ergos here. Uh, Rancor 4, Rancor 2, and just a bunch of Rancors. I thought this was Bear Ops. <laughs> And these are called the Swipes. Hmm. Well, none of these are specifically drawing me in. Uh, this one looks like it would pick up a lot of pocket fuzz. Maybe... I might be a little crazy here, but maybe I'll go with this uh, Cyan one. Or Teal, they're calling it. I don't know. In real life, maybe it'll look different. Yeah, it's just the, the, the combination of like a camo theme, but with a non-camo color intrigues me. I'd go with this one. $17. <clears throat> a couple of budget um, brands. Uncle Henry, which I think is made by Schrade, and Smith & Wesson, the military and police line. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> Oh yeah, we have some old timers down here, so yeah, this is probably straight as well. Um, we have one of these like keychain multi-tool things in the shape of a gun. It's got hex wrench things, a bottle opener, and a ruler, and they probably will still not allow you to bring it on an airplane, even if your name is Madison Cawthorn. Oh, and there's a grenade one too. I actually have a couple of these. <laughs> From the Smoky Mountain Knife Works um, monthly packages, I've got this one, and I'm pretty sure I've gotten this one too. Um, this one's got like that sort of, uh, asphalt or, um, roof shingle feel in the inlays here. And this one was pretty neat. It was just like, kind of jagged flipper tabbed, uh, you know, it hurts after a while to open that thing over and over again. And I think I might actually have something like this, but a different color arrangement. Anyway, let's see what's going on back over here. <clears throat> we got one of these funky uh, things. What is that? Oh, oh, it, it's both of these come in the same package. Uh, they're together in the sheath here. I like the way this one looks. That's a, just a neat look. We have like a sharp fingerish thing here. And there's an actual sharp finger here. <laughs> oh, this is a set. The Sharp Finger and Pal. In a nice little box. <clears throat> I do like me a good sharp finger, but you don't really need more than one, and I already have one. Let's see, what do we have up here? These are, uh, yeah, this lighting is killing me. Let's try that. All right, that's better. Boot, knife, neck, knife combo. I'm guessing that's the neck knife. Reminiscent of the uh, CRKT Minimalist, the Hawkbill one that they came out with recently. You know what? I'm going to go with the... I'm not a gun guy, but the novelty. Actually, I changed my mind completely. This is a knife and cigar cutter lighter set. <clears throat> and I know a guy who really likes cigars. So maybe I would get this, uh, that's got a holiday gift covered for that friend. <laughs> Done. 
Seventeen dollars on that. That's pretty good. Oh my goodness, what have we got here? Well, we have uh, Mac Cotillery. That looks uh, like a non-American word. And over here we have MKM, which is um, made in Italy. Now, what are all these? These are pretty inexpensive. Like, all under, like, 15 bucks. Oh, it's a mushroom knife. Yeah, those do come, like, with a little uh, brush in the back. I've never actually been mushroom hunting. It's really huge in the Midwest uh, of the U.S. Probably in other places, too. Uh, electrician's knife. Some click point knives. Hmm, that's interesting. These are very, very low priced. Um, I like the color on this one. It sort of reminds me of, like, the uh, Sword Peasant line, but with a different finish. And it's also not a friction folder. Anyway, on to the MKM. We have an interesting looking frame lock knife. That, uh, it's kind of a stiletto style. Uh, these are the Isanzos, and some of these might be new to me. Slip joint folders. Everyone's getting into slip joints. I'm not complaining, but that MKM's got them too now. Hmm. Normally it's not my style, but I think I might go for this one because it's got red lava carbon fiber handle scales, and that might look pretty cool. Let me see if I can give you a closer look. Yeah, it's a bit dark even in the catalog, but yeah, I like that look. What is that thing? Oh, that's a smaller picture of the other side of the knife. Wait, so that's... Is it only one-sided with that thing? Never mind, I hate it when they do that. I gotta pick something else. And you know what, I might go with this blue and orange Isanzo. Um, because I like the colors. And these are less money than the ones I have with the fat carbon. 85 bucks a piece. Nice. Oh, Benchmade. Well, you got your Osbournes, you got your bailouts, and over here you got your Griptilians. Man, all, all of these are Griptilians. But I do like me a good Griptilian. I have a mini Griptilian. It's this one, actually. And I have an Osborne as well. It's the OG green. Oh yeah, and the Anonymous, the big fixie. Um, the Essie killer, some are saying. <laughs> uh, gosh, you know what? I actually had a pretty good experience with a bug out. Um, one that did not come with like the blue scales. Maybe I'd like to try a bailout. I don't like serrations very much, so I guess I'll go with the Gray coated CPM 3V tool steel blade. Never heard of that steel. Black grivery handles. $166.50 plus aftermarket Omega Springs. That <laughs> you should probably just order up front with these. Alright, these are half breed knives. Blades, rather. Half breed. I wonder what the story with that company name is. Not familiar with this one, but it looks like they got a color theme going on. They have like olive drab, desert, blackout, and well, that's it. Um, we got these big, aggressive looking fixed blade knives. These medium aggressive looking fixed blade knives. Uh, mill spec frame locks. Frame locks have a mill spec? What the hell does that mean? I mean, I'm familiar with mill spec, and military specifications are not really great. <laughs> it just means, like, it's functional enough for what it needs to do in the moment, and sometimes that's not very good. I wouldn't advertise that. Um, well, I guess for people who don't know any better. Is this purple? Burgundy. Ooh. And uh, this one, too. I might have to go with one of these just because of the burgundy scale material. And this one's not serrated, so I will go with this one. The Plain Dark Earth Burgundy uh, Half-Breed Blade for $285. Oh, we got some tactical pens down here for 50 bucks. Nice. 
Okay. Uh, got some brands I'm familiar with now. Some uh, Kaiser knives over here. Uh, Cancept. I'm not familiar with them, actually. And Western Actives Honey Badger Series. All right. This is going to be a fun page. What the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, right off the bat, we have this funky-looking butcher knife. How big is this thing? Five and three quarter inches overall. It's is this like a butcher neck knife? I might have to get that one. That's interesting. Here's a button lock knife called the Assassin. Ooh, this one looks pretty sharp. Uh, the Vanguard. A mini Begliter. 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 Uh, the Jungs. Jungs. Young. Jungies. Hmm. Names I can't pronounce. I can pronounce butcher knife. <laughs> the Azolib, the mini sheepdog. A lot of people like the sheepdogs. Over at these Cancept folders. Well, this one's got a neat uh, uh, Warncliffe sheep's foot thing going on. Um, so is that one. Uh, I've got a couple of honey badger knives, and I love the Warren Cleaver blade. That's my favorite. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm going to go with the... Kaiser Butcher Knife. It's just so weird looking. It's perfect. $55. Lion Steel Knives on the left. Cold Steel Knives on the right. This is going to be a tough choice. Lion Steel Knives are pretty expensive, from what I remember. And, um, yeah, here we are. Between uh, 150 to 300 bucks for this election. <clears throat> uh, we got the slip joint jackknife up here. Okay, these look way too big for me. This one looks way too generic for me. That's $156 for a under four inch. Well, closed a knife. That's that seems way overpriced. Is it made out of actual lion? And over to the cold steel. I'm a fan of their stuff. Uh, we got the SR1. Light, the Bush Ranger. I have heard of that one. I've not heard of the Grick. <laughs> That's a funny name. 1911. Oh, I do have this one though, in red. The Mini Tough Light. It's a sub thirty dollar cold steel knife, and it is really small, but it's um, actually comfy. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. I'm gonna go with the Grick. <laughs> it looks like it's a lockback knife. Oh, Andrew Demko design. Okay. AUS 8A stainless steel. Uh, triad lock. So, whatever that means. Yeah, just it's got this like plug, a, a plugged hole thing going on. Uh, Alright, and that is um, $48. Gerber and Kershaw. Normally this would be a tough decision, but these Gerber knives I'm looking at, I don't think any of them tickle my fancy. Oh, I didn't look. Hmm, they got the highbrow though. That one. That one's pretty neat. And a couple of machetes, the frame, paraframe. I got a couple of those. I don't really care for them. Uh, I think I might even have one of these, the LST. Oh, I have one of these too, the, the Barbill Wallet. Came with an SMKW monthly box. And over to Kershaw. I do like me a good Kershaw. Uh, the Oblivion was a knife that I was actually recently looking at. I got a couple of knives that kind of look like it, but um, I just think it's funny that it's called the Oblivion. That's the only reason why I was considering it. But for $46, that's kind of a lot of money for a funny name. Yeah, I don't care for these handle shapes very much. This one uh, looks nice and symmetrical. The Misdirect Frame Lock. Uh, well, I'm kind of trying to choose between the, the, oh, this is the Highbrow Compact, so it's like more compact. Where do I get the Oblivion? I think I'll go with the Highbrow Compact. And it's Assisted Opening Pivot Lock, whatever that means. Um, so, yeah, give that one a shot. Give it a Thirty-nine dollars. Whew! 
CRKT, another brand that I really like. Uh, Viper by Technocut SNC. Not familiar with them. But they got some interesting looking stuff. These are reminiscent of SE, sort of. Uh, not really, though. Forget that I said that. Uh, these are all like slip joint folders and we got this massive fixed blade knife, the Carnura. Designed by somebody named uh, Tommaso Rumichi. It's D2 steel. Oh, that's gonna rust up if you bushcraft with it though. I think I'm gonna have to um, seriously consider one of these CRKT knives. My eyes are immediately drawn to this one. The Drip tie frame block. Now I remember the tie looking pretty compelling. This handle design is excellent looking. Ah, I like that. And I was drawn to this one because it's got this like sub hilt piece in the scales. This is the, oh that's the rip snort. Okay, I don't have one, I'm just kind of familiar with the name. <clears throat> Shenanigan, Pazoda. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the the drip tie. It's got an outburst assisted opening, which is in bold for some reason. It's inspired by maple syrup on pancakes. <laughs> I've definitely made the right choice there. $57. <laughs> oh boy, we got Spyderco and flashlights. Well, I'm not a flashlight guy, so I'm not going to pick any of them. Why is that one $130? I just get the $1 Ozark Trail ones and call it a day. <laughs> and over here, this is one that came out sort of recently, the Stovepipe. And I remember there being kind of an interesting mix of moods about it. A lot of people were like, oh my god, I'm getting it, it's amazing. And then there were people who were like, holy crap, that knife looks ugly. And when it's folded, it's just so huge, there's no way I would ever want that. And it's $420. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I could see this being just like a limited run, and then it fades away and nobody remembers it. Um, the Ikuchi looks interesting. I've eyed this knife before. Uh, I do like a good Delica. And this has the, uh, the sheep's foot uh, kind of thing going on. Hmm, then we get the Endura Street Beat. Not heard of that one. Um, some of the normal ones. The Resilience. Wait, Emphasis. Oh, that one's new to me, too. They're making all kinds of cool stuff. Oh, and then these are like the Bird series, the cheaper ones. Here we got the Kara Kara and the Harrier, which this one's sort of like a Delica, and this one's, I guess, sort of like a Tenacious or something. Eh, more like maybe an Endura. I don't know. Well, I mean, I, maybe I should just get the Stovepipe. You know, just to say, like, well, I got one. <laughs> it's the $420 monstrosity, uh, just for the novelty of it. I have no idea what, like, the application for something like that is. But, hey, at least Spyderco is trying something new. Okay, we got the full Victorinox spread page. Oh, there's, a, like, a shark attack knife with SMKW's logo on it. <laughs> That could be a fun one. Now we got the, the world champion of hide and seek knife. I've definitely had this Bigfoot one in my shopping cart a few times. Uh, the bacon knife. Then your SD Classics. Uh, you know what? Let's do something a little altruistic. I'm going to get the autism awareness knife. Um, because I'm assuming that, yep, 25% of the proceeds from the sale go to... Peer Academy. Okay, as long as it's not Autism Speaks, I've heard bad things. So yeah, I would get the Autism Awareness Tinker, $32. I didn't even look at this page. <laughs> uh, I do have a Ranger Grip. Uh, maybe not this one. More stuff. I've actually been looking at the one-handed Sentinel, but I wasn't sure if it did that thing where you push the logo to unlock it, because um, I love that. But I have it on a Ranger, which is just too much. If I could just get that blade with the push button lock, that would be great. 
Uh, plus it comes with a pocket clip. Um, I'm just not sure if that's how it works, but my decision has already been made. Oh, I have a mini champ too, by the way. It's pretty cool. All right, over here we have Smith and & Sons in Bradford, USA. Ox liner locks look pretty neat. Not really into these so much. And down here are Trapper liner locks. Hmm. Okay. And they have pocket clips. Best of both worlds. The classic folder, but with a pocket clip. And uh, over on the Bradford side, <clears throat> I like the use of the multi-layering in this handle. That's SC reminiscent. Um, these mostly look the same to me, except for the blade shapes. <coughs> you like the natural micarta look. I have a couple of knives with that. <clears throat> well, you know, maybe I'll give one of these knives over here a try. Since this one comes with a pocket clip, I'll go with one of these three. I'd go with the white one. <clears throat> the white tumbled finish blade. $119. D That's a lot of money for D2. Holy crap. Oh, we got Benchmade again. Uh, and then we got Hogue. And then Boker. Okay, this is going to be a fun page. So, let's look at the Benchmade first. We got the Adamas. The Presidio. Another Osborne. Oh, okay. Um... These are new. The Claymore. Hmm. What's this about? $207 D2 steel. Hmm. I'm already not a huge fan. I do like D2 steel, just not for $200. That's just like a $25 knife with a $182 butterfly on it, you know? And then the Kasbah. Over on the Hogue side, these are the OTF knives that Hogue makes, which I didn't actually know that was a thing until recently. Uh, I do like OTFs, but only to play with. I would never actually, like, I don't know, use it at work or something. It's a bit much. So we have the Compound, which has an interesting uh, hexagonal camo pattern to it. Actually, these two do as well. The Hadron... So these are actually not terribly priced for OTFs, and it's Hogue, so that's that's actually pretty pretty good lineup. What are the steels here? CPM S30V, S30V, 154 CM. Yeah, Hogue is doing a pretty good thing there. Now, these knives, these are the Boba Fett-themed ones that I put out a short video some months ago. I actually bought one. And I had to send it down to somebody else's place that they were going to forward it to me. It's a long story, but I, I still don't have it because the person I sent it to is very lazy. <laughs> but I got, I got this one, and uh, they did not sell out so quickly. They eventually did, and then they restocked, and they're still for sale on uh, SMKW's website because these are exclusives. But a lot of people just don't like them because they are kind of ugly. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, these are, you know, just like the Kalishnikov series, these ones are out the side. Push-button automatics. Uh, this is the Striker model, and then the Kalishnikov models. Anyway, which one would I get out of this page? Holy crap, that's a tough proposition. I guess I'd go with one of the Hogue ATFs. I kind of like the look of this one. The, it's, it's, a, it's sort of like a contour map with hexagons in it, $305.96. Case, full page of case, a lot of variety too. Um, well, it looks like they're organizing it by type. So up here we have the Copperheads, which are kind of like trappers, but they're not, because um, they come with different blades, <laughs> but the handle of a trapper. We have the Leather Hunter set, so this is a two-knife set. They both slip into this little sheath, well, big sheath here. Uh, got some toothpicks. And over here, we have mini copper heads and a Shot Show Stockman. 
What does that mean? 2022 shot show. Is it like commemorating the sh something? I don't know. And then here we have the American Workman series, uh, which is red. And a couple of novelty ones. There's a Corvette-themed one, a wild game-themed one, which has a neat picture of like a, a turkey and a... Uh, uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, it's not a duck, but it's it's like a body of a duck, but the head of a parrot. <laughs> I am not a hunter. <laughs> then we got a stag and a moose. So I like that. It's like sort of colorful, but subdued at the same time. And then we have the randomly a uh, abalone mini copperhead. Well, just because the artwork looks really nice, I think I'm just going to go with the Wild Game Series Trapper Gift Set. It's a set. What else does it come with? Um, the box and a certificate of authenticity. $130. Fantastic. Okay. we got a bunch of Zippo lighters. Um, oh, they got one with zombies on it. I might have to get that one. I like zombies. And uh, there's like PBR. Ooh, I know, I know a friend who would love this. Hmm, bloody hands. Yeah, I like where Zippo's going with these. Then up here we have some kind of random smattering of like roses with a switchblade, uh, pink flamingo skull, <laughs> and over here these are. Um, I guess all of these are new, according to that. What in the world? Okay, 90th anniversary commemorative lighters. We have one themed after a cathedral. Uh, a skull with mushrooms coming out of it. There's like a vaporwave astronaut thing going on there. That's pretty neat. Down here we have alchemy. Ah, I like that. And here's a UFO abducting some cows. Oh, and a, and a guy. Okay. Oof, I actually, that's a tough choice. I'm actually not sure. Hmm. I'm a giving person. I think I'd go with the PBR lighter just because uh, I, I have a friend who would really like that. And I will give it to that person for $27.16. Oh, we've got the centerfold. It's a Microtech. Looks like one of the UTX series. Um, Ultratech OTF automatic and that's all it says I don't really know is there something special about it or is it just you know, it's got like a tan blade and, okay so it's a microtech and there's a microtech gun okay we have some tools council tool company and uh a climb oh acclimate ah, i get it now combar oh, i lost it <laughs> and then over down here is Gransfors brook axes uh oh made in sweden okay not much of an axe man but um you know when i was in high school i was a fan of their body spray I'm glad I grew out of that phase. <laughs> well, this is a funky looking one. It's a fro carpentry axe. Splits wood very finely for making shingles and more. No sheath. The head removes for easy transport. Uh, let's have a look at these acclimate things. Um, it's got an unbreakable ergonomic shaft. 420... J2 steel. You get a detachable uh, folding saw and fixed blade knife. So it's like a um, a brick. It's like a hobo tool, but it's an axe. <laughs> I don't know anything about these things. They're just axes to me. Hmm. Well, these are throwing axes, apparently. Wooks. Oh, this is an entire different brand down here. Sorry, Wooks, I missed you. Well, just because it's different and interesting, I'm going to go with the Acclimate. 
Holy crap, this is $539. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess that's what I'm getting. Magazines and uh, sites. Both things I don't really have a need for. Uh, like I said, I am not a gun guy. I do have some airsoft stuff. Maybe I can get one of these and put it on an airsoft gun. <laughs> So, I guess I'll just get one of these for pistols. 370 bucks battery and oh, it's solar powered as well. Nice. All right. I brand Clodbuster utility knives. And then we got Martini and Martini's other half, Mora. Okay, mostly, you know, filleting type knives, and then a smattering of these uh, sodbuster style knives. Mm. I do like a good solid sod buster, but I like these types of knives too, and I've already got a companion, so I'm going to look at the martini selection. I don't think I have a martini knife, or at least not in this style, so I don't really know much about what's what, like what's their big popular one. I guess I will just go with the... I'll go with the new one, the Lynx Black Edition. ADCR V2 Carbon Steel. Um, it's got a satin and forged finish. So it's one of those like roughly finished looking things, kind of like the Sword Peasant, if that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, nice brass collar looking thing on there. Yeah, why not? That, that's a nice one. Black birchwood handle, 80 bucks. Okay, Ooh, we got a smattering of survival tools and equipment. Let's see what we have. Oh, we have one of these old uh, camp stoves. I actually have one that I got in like the 90s. They come with the little fuel pellets. Um, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, but I have one. Yeah, you just like unfold it, put your fuel pellet on there, and fire it up. Down here we have stuff by Uko Gear. This kind of looks like general camping things like matches, eating wear, a fire striker, a flashlight, lit, lit, leshy, led, let, leshy LED lantern and plus flashlight. Oh, all right. And then over here, five star gear. I have one of them shitty credit card tools I have like a million of. Uh, oh, I actually have this, or something like it, this survival bandana. Got it from SMKW through their monthly boxes. And this thing, which actually works really well. And I got one of these too, and then lost it like a day later. It's like a big bundle of twist tie, like wire things. I have no idea where the fuck it went. I brought it down to my basement to actually use it, and it's gone. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they got these, like, military-style angled flashlights. These are only $5? I don't know. Oh, they're tiny, though. So you have one of the big ones that take, like, the D-cells, and you get those color inserts to make the light blue or red. Um, oh, and they got the P-51s. Huh. A lot of things to choose from. Well, I think I'd go with this thing. The, the Leshy LED Lantern and Flashlight. It's like a flashlight lantern combo. I just like the colors, that's why I'm choosing it. <laughs> $9. Back to the knives. We have in yellow, Boker. Boker tree brand. Magnum by Boker, well, one, one of them. And over here, more Boker. Catalyst frame locks in every color combination you could conceive of. Wow. Okay, let's see. I'll begin by looking at the Lava Flow Fat Carbon Quaken. Oh. Uh, the Quaken Air, to be precise. Was this the one that was on the centerfold of one of the previous catalogs? I can't remember. My eye. A couple of Damascus blades. Uh, the bad guy. <laughs> At first, a, is that a mushroom or, like, vaguely a skull? Uh, I think I have one of these two from an SMKW box. 
Oh, they are exclusives. So I guess I would have had to have been from them. I just can't remember if it was the green one or the black smooth bone. Hmm. Anyway, I want to look at these. <clears throat> Catalyst frame blocks. Um, I have not seen these before. They look very simple. They look like they'd be comfortable. Looks like the pocket clips are the deep ride kind that kind of go up and over from the inside. Hmm. All of these down here have fullers. And all of these up here have black. Because I don't care too much for fullers, and I don't care too much for black finishes. So this is going to be a tough choice if I get from this panel, which I should. Is this the uh, yeah, natural G10 or Jade, as they're sometimes called? I do like it, but it doesn't really glow like that. Uh, it'd be cool if it did. All right, I think I'll go with one of these satin ones. I'll go with the orange. That's a really nice color for a knife. I like it. $44.67. It's like $3 cheaper than the other ones. Why? <laughs> uh, no idea. All right. Over here we have... Castrom Outdoor Knife. Is that... Uh, I don't think that's the brand. Castrom. Oh, I guess it is. Castrom. And then... Okay, okay. So this is Castrom. And then down here is Kisliar. And then over here is Apoch and Dragon King. <laughs> Well, I think I know which panel I'm going with. Well, let's have a look at the Castrom Outdoor Knives. Pretty handsome looking. I like this wooden handle. Um, otherwise, there's not a whole lot to them. The Kisliar Knives. These look huge. 12 inches overall. Yeah, that's a foot-long knife. Holy cow. And down here we've got... Um, oh, this one's called the Zorg? No way! What a great name for a knife. We got the Supreme Zorg, the Supreme Prime, and the Supreme Dream. Oh. Yeah, these handles are pretty spiffy looking. I like the curvature on this multi-layered green and black. Kind of reminds me of, like, the Rings of a uh, Planet, you know? This one just for the name. <laughs> well, that's going to make this decision... Pretty tough. I'm not a sword guy. I don't know anything about swords. But I like that this one's called a survival katana. <laughs> uh, that's pretty fun. And here we have a survival long sword. <laughs> and this one's a tactical bra. This, this brand is awesome. APOC. I dig. Now the Dragon King swords. I guess they're period pieces. Um, there's a... Spring Sakura, Summer Lotus, the Atrium Type 13 War Sword, and an axe, a bearded axe. <clears throat> so these are like Ren Fair but for real stuff. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go with the Zorg. Well, they need another knife called the ZF1. All right, we've got K bars. And over here, we have Ontario Knife Companies. Now, this is going to be a tough choice for me, because I like both of these brands. <clears throat> well, all right. K-Bar's got the Combat Bowie and the Companion. Uh, got the Fighting Knives, um, the Snake Charmer. That is a $90 tiny piece of metal. No thanks. These are new. The Snowdy Fixed Blades with purple handles, but these look blue. I guess that's an option. K-Bar Flipper Liner Locks. You got uh, that one. And the Tactical Chopsticks. Then, on the Ontario side of things, <clears throat> a Blackbird. That's interesting. It's, um, is it a fixed blade knife? I think it is. doesn't say. I'm assuming that's a fixed blade knife. And this one looks like a folding knife. Oh, the Equinox. I have heard of that one. Look at this monster. The Rat 3? Oh, they made a Rat 3. Huh. And it's, um... 
boxy? <laughs> it's a black powder coated high carbon steel with micarta handles. Well, I'm pretty sure a bunch of people will probably get it just because it's called the Rat 3 and, you know, I understand. Complete the series, right? This one's kind of like an Ulu with a handle. Um, it's called the Gober? Or the Skinner? What? Oh, these are, these are, these are all Rat 3s. They just changed up the, uh, the blade here. And then we got the, the caper, which looks like a caping knife. Uh, Camp Plus Cooks Lockbacks. So, knives you can take camping with you and cook with them. I mean, you can do that with a, pretty much any of these, right? <laughs> oh, wow. I actually have both of these. I have the USMC one and the USSF one. Huh, fancy that. Maybe I'll go with one of the Rat 3s. I, I, I'm kind of intrigued by the Ulu-ish one. So, yeah, I'll go with that one. It is called the uh, Skinner. $66.95. So they, they finally made a Rat 3. Okay. Here we have some frost cutlery stuff. And over here we have a bunch of random, random things. <laughs> so we got um, hen and rooster, that's frost cutlery. Case, a Father's Day. Oh, this is that, that hard to say one. The small swell center jack. Uh, a whittling set. An old timer woodworking knife. I actually have one of these. Uncle Henry wooden wood wooden kit. Yes, that's what I I meant to say that. Uh, a lot of wood carving going on here. Steel X wood carving, Mora uh, carving knife, and a Rough Rider carving set. Hmm. Well, I haven't gotten into wood carving at all. <laughs> I mean, I, like I guess I I could start. I have that thing if I if, if I fancied it. Uh, the Hen and Rooster Father and Son Barlow set. Huh. So, like, it comes in a box together, and I guess who gets to keep them both? The father or the son? Well, maybe you're still living with your father, I don't know. Then you got these fun ones. I don't have any of these. Like, uh, Case puts out a lot of these uh, commemorative sets um, where it comes with some kind of a vehicle with the knife, and I don't know why I don't have one yet. I just never did. <laughs> I should look up their uh, catalog and see if I can find a fun one. And okay, so this is all Father's Day stuff. All right, so wood carving and Father's Day. Well, I think I want a truck knife. So, hmm, we got dad, grandpa, son, and grandson. Well, I think the coolest looking truck is this one. So I'm going to have a son for 50 bucks. If only they were that cheap in real life. We got a few things going on here. This is called Valley Forge uh, Cutlery Company. Chipaway Cutlery, which is frost cutlery. And over here, Silver Horse Stoneworks. So these all might be frost cutlery owned. They, they, they have a lot of, like, subsidiaries. Um, I just haven't heard of these two, but I have heard of Chip Away. That's one of their older uh, sub-brands, I guess. We have a lot going on here. My goodness. So these are fighting knives and dirks with um, probably garbage Damascus going on. I like the, the guard that kind of has this 90-degree turn. That's, that's kind of cool. Now, from the Chippeway section, these are usually Native American themed, um, which looks great in the catalog. Like, I would love to have this. I just know that's not what it's going to look like if I were to ever get one. <laughs> now, this Silver Horse Stoneworks looks like they got um, bone themed scales going on. As far as I can tell, I mean, it doesn't say it's synthetic. So, I think these are actual stag handles. And then they got white jigged bone down here with that titanium uh, rainbow look. 
And then all the way down here, we have the Black Hills Steel Trappers. Um, not huge into trappers, though. I'm not huge into religion either, so it's going to be a tough decision, too. <laughs> um, let's look at some of the configurations, perhaps. They got peanut, small toothpicks, a stockman, a doctor's knife, a trapper, and a Choctaw. Okay, this is... I think this is frost colory because I've seen Choctaw knives advertised with them a lot. Or maybe I should get one of these over here. Hmm. I really like the way this one looks. You know what? Okay. If it looks exactly like this and doesn't have nasty gaps or garbage, whatever, I would get this one. The Seahawk Hunter. Wood and brass... Wood and bone handles, mosaic pin, brass, black, and file worked brass spacers. Lots and lots of brass in that one. <laughs> Over here we've got Victorinox and Rough Rider, a bunch of flags, an Indian Dag Knife. What is this? Oh, this is um, Right Edge. Okay. And, okay, so this whole page is right edge, it looks like. Uh, this is Vietnam Brotherhood Pocket Knives from... Uh, I thought it was... Yeah, it says Victorinox right here. Well, I'm not going to steal Valor. I won't take any of those. Um, patriotic? Eh, no thanks. I express my patriotism in the voting booth. So I guess we're going with right edge, which has a lot of... Damascus everything, and then a couple of Buck 110 look-alikes. File tool steel, so these are file knives. I got plenty of those too. Uh, these are called pig stickers. I like the name. <laughs> I think I gotta go with one of these up here. I've seen these before in, a, in the catalogs over the years, and they're, they're see-and-do has always kind of intrigued me because of the handle. Um, so I might finally just go with the sea and do. Damascus steel blade, rosewood handle, file worked throat. Okay. <laughs> uh, brass, and it's 40 bucks. Okay, this is the blade blank page um, that they have in like every single catalog. Let's get a slab of Damascus steel. And uh, I'll send it to Tristan Barnett. Done. Okay, we got a huge selection of Rough Rider knives. Uh, we got Mother's Day things going on over here. Purple Swirl series down here. The Sparkle series here. Okay, and then over here, the Tough stag pocket knives oh and then the wasp set uh, I saw those for the first time in the previous catalog and then the Highland traditional pocket knives the Scots <laughs> I'm talking about uh, the McLeod tribe tribe clan <laughs> well I think I might go with one of these um, I think I did a, a wasp one last month hmm the Sparkle series could be fun, though. Hmm. And then you have a doctor's knife. Eh, I think I'll go with my original gut, which was the Tough Stag. Which has uh, this elongated hexagonal shield. Okay, now we got to pick a model. I do have a canoe knife. I don't like it that much, though. Not huge into trappers. You know what? I don't have enough Congress knives. I think I'll go with the Congress. $16.99. Okay. Marbles. And more marbles. <clears throat> I have one of these axes. It was in, like, one of the first SMKW boxes I got. Uh, I think it was the Camp Axe. I've used it a bunch of times. It works. And they have these orange machetes, which I've always liked the color of those. Uh, got some utility things down here. Oh, 
a little fishing survival card thing. And a bird and trout neck knife. Okay. And up here we got stacked leather, not handled knives. Uh, ooh, a survival set. What is this thing? Available separately. Oh, it's a matchbox. Huh. Well, that's deceiving. They're like, it's a survival set, but not that thing. It comes separate. Whatever. Uh, discontinued. Marble's survival bowie. Um, a modern ideal knife. That's kind of an ambitious name. The scrimshaw, which comes with a hilariously tiny folding axe head. I've always kind of wanted one of those, actually. Uh, we've got some ram's horn knives. Barlow and a trapper, by the looks of them. The Cattle King. Oh, that that that's like a Diablo 2 thing, right? <laughs> I have to get that just for, you know, the Cow King connection. Um, got one of them knives with the Marlin Spike. Hmm, okay. After looking through all these, I think I would go with this one, just because uh, the, the Cattle King. It just sounds cool. Uh, it's sort of a Barlow. Let's see what they have to say. They, they, they kind of don't. It, it, it's the Cattle King. That's all you need to know. Okay, and we got a whole page of camping slash survival stuff. What have we got over here? We got uh, tarps, hammocks, cooking gear, a packable grill. Interesting. I like the name of this one, the Mini Inferno Fire Starter. That's cool. It's like a little disc fire starter thing. Comes in like a snuff can. <laughs> Um, ferro rods, camp tongs, a bottle hanger. Oh, okay, so you can, like, hang your thing off of a stick and get it hot. And then there's a set, uh, a cup and a tumbler thing. And then over here, this is all Yeti stuff. Uh, I don't have any Yeti stuff. Wow, that ain't cheap. 250 bucks for a cooler? Why? It's armored. <laughs> it's an armored cooler. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm calling it. I'm getting the armored cooler. <laughs> I mean, really? Why is this so much money? Um, the Rody 24 Hard Cooler Bimini Pink. Uh, I guess that's the color. Uh, almost 24 quarts. And it's virtually indestructible. Can fit most wine bottles. And it's got a hefty hauler handle. Okay. It performs 30% better than its predecessor, so it's got that going for it. All right. We got some Victorinox kitchen wear on uh, this page. And then over here, there's more kitchen wear made by Z Willing and Henkels. I like the uh, logo of Henkels. It's like a dude holding a halberd or something. <laughs> uh, I feel like whenever I look at these things, I always pick like a caper knife or a vegetable knife or something like that. So I'm going to do something a little different this time. I'm going to go with something big. We got the um, eight inch chef knife from Victorinox. And over here we have the Pro S8 chef's knife, which is a hundred dollars more than the S Victorinox one. And then we have this $135 bread knife. I think I'll get this one just to say that I have a $135 bread knife. <laughs> oh, cool. We got some cookware from Zwilling again, and also Ballerini, 1889. More kitchenware by Wustoff and Shun. Oh, wow. That looks nice. All right. Well, over here we have um, pots and pans. I'm pretty good on pots and pans. I don't really need any of this stuff. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with this thing. The Premier Walnut Boning and Filet Knife. That's just such a cool-looking steel. It's, like, reflective, and it looks, you know, hammered. Uh, I like it. 170 bucks. We're getting close to the end, folks, because uh, we got the order page. Does anyone use these anymore? 
We got a meatball griller. A cheese melting dome. Oh, okay. Yeah, you put it over your whatever you want to melt the cheese and it, the convection melts it. I've actually used something like this to cook eggs with. Uh, if you like them sunny side up but not too gooey, you can, yeah, you put this over your egg. Uh, you don't even have to use something like this. It could just be like the lid to a pot or something. Um, and it, it like cooks it at the top a little bit too. It makes really great eggs. Anyway, a beer can chicken roaster, or you can just use a beer can. Like <laughs> what? Uh, I've had beer can chicken before. It's a pretty fun thing. A taco grilling rack. Ooh. So you can grill. Oh, ooh. that that's mm. Mm. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. A uh, stuffed burger maker, so you can make your own Juicy Lucy. Sweet. Huh. I've always wondered how they do that. Uh. And then we have a cactus-shaped kebab thing. And down here are a bunch of meat thermometers. Oh, well, I already know how to do that without that. Uh, I don't know why I would grill meatballs. I guess that's like one of the only ways to make meatballs on a campfire, really. Uh, I'm gonna go with the, the Juicy Lucy maker thing. Um, put the cheese on the inside of a burger. I don't know how it works. But, um, that's what I'm getting for $7.99. And we got to the back page, where there are more bullets by Hornady and Remington. 9mm and 9mm Luger. Hmm. Both of them are 150 grain. Strangely, for $25, you get 25 rounds, a buck a bullet. Over here, you get 50 rounds, and it's $20. Huh. Are these just, like, shittier bullets? I don't know. So, uh, anyway. I don't know who this guy is, but he actually looks familiar. He might have been on one of the SMKW live streams. I like how they have a little T-Rex in there, too. That is the May edition of the Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog game. Thanks for playing. Join me next month.